I can't really describe the feeling of having you all here in a not cooperating weather. And and it, cer it certainly brings joy to our heart to see our brothers and sisters, our fellow Canadians are here. You know, and everybody took the initiative and made the effort to come in the snow while some of us had difficulty driving and some of us like myself had the wipers not working so we were stopping every five minutes and cleaning the windshield. So we appreciate your patience. Now, what we want to say at the beginning, first and foremost, we are proud Canadians. We're definitely all proud to be Canadians. We're proud because we live in a country, in a country that respects humanity that respect the rights of the individuals, and respect the cultures and, and faith and religions. And definitely we are lucky to live in Canada because we know that our fellow Canadians are one of the most open-minded people on the face of the planet. The fact that you're here shows this. The fact that you're in Toronto, in Montreal, in Ottawa, in Calgary, standing with your fellow Muslim brothers and sisters makes us all proud to be Canadians. The other thing also, some might agree, might not, we're lucky to have Prime Minister Justin, Justin Trudeau as our Prime Minister. We thank him, we thank him for the warm, <laughs> we thank him for the warm welcome that he's given our community, we thank him for his positive statements, and we definitely, when we look down south and see the difference between him and the other fellow, you know his name, makes, makes us feel that we're lucky to have him for sure. So we want to... Yeah. I'm sure the liberals will like that very much. <laughs> okay, well, we want to start our program in a traditional Islamic way, as reading some verses of the Holy Quran in the, in the blessing and, and in the honor of the six souls that got killed in Quebec and send in the prayer to God Almighty to have mercy on those souls. So I'm reading to you a few verses from the chapter called the chapter of the being. The chapter of the being. As we know, the Quran has 114 chapter, and I choose this chapter, and I choose these verses. So when I read them to you, you'll understand the concept. As the bee teaches us, and the Quran also teaches us as human being to work together as a family. And the bee, in its concept and its and its um, job in this world, they all work together for the benefit and to bring us honey and to bring us and when you when you really think about the bees a very small creation we're really nothing without them so the ayat or the verse says bismillah rahman rahim inna allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dhi al qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi يَعِظُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ وَأَوْفُوا بِعَهْدِ اللَّهِ إِذَا عَاهَدْتُمْ وَلَا تَنْقُضُوا الْأَيْمَانَ وَلَا تَنْقُضُوا الْأَيْمَانَ بَعْدَ تَوْكِيدِهَا وَقَدْ جَعَلْتُمُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَقَدْ جَعَلْتُمُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْكُمْ كَفِيلًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا تَفْعَلُونَ وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّتِي نَقَضَتْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ أَنْكَاثًا تَتَّخِذُونَ أَيْمَانَكُمْ تَتَّخِذُونَ أَيْمَانَكُمْ دَخَلًا بَيْنَكُمْ أَنْ تَكُونَ أُمَّةٌ هِيَ أَرْبَى مِنْ أُمَّةٍ إِنَّمَا يَبِلُوكُمُ اللَّهُ بِهِ وَلِيُبَيِّنَ لَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مَا كُنْتُمْ فِيهِ تَخْتَلِفُونَ صدق الله العظيم I'll ask brother Ahmed Khalil or to read the transmission or maybe uh, I guess he's, I guess he's uh, still parking his car okay <laughs> so, so the translation says indeed Allah 
the Almighty command you to do justice and be good to your next of kin and your fellow man and forbid you from wrongdoing and wickedness. He admonishes you that you remember. Keep your covenants to Allah. Keep your covenants to Allah when you make the oath so that you have already made Allah a witness over your covenants. And do not be like the one that had twisted her work after it was strong, taking your oath as a mean of deceit between you, lest that he makes nations more plentiful than other nations, so that he tries you with it, and examine your work, and indeed, in the day of resurrection, he will prove his science to you. What those ayat of those verses means in the Surah al nahr in chapter of the B, it teaches us to work together, to be one community, commands us to do justice, and commands us to keep our covenants, and to be straight up in our dealing and to protect one another and when we do something good we do not spoil it by doing something bad so that we continue being good citizens and good people and good human beings indeed Allah speaks the truth brothers and sisters now we are here this evening not to just shout in the mic or to say slogans but our aim and our main achievement of this gathering is to send a message to the officials, send a message to the media, send a message to our fellow Canadians to say to them, work together with your community, stop hate, stop racism, stop Islamophobia. Now, Now you can see for yourself that Islamophobia claims life. In the States, last year, three doctors and one pharmacist lost their lives in the parking lot. A mosque got burned in Texas. In, in Edmonton, a mosque has been vandalized. A girl has been beaten in a sky train. And it escalates to a level of danger that now 13 people got shot in a place of worship while they're after and they're prior. Six of them get killed, and we pray that their soul rest in peace. And we are trying our very best to pray for them and for their families and for their siblings to give them patience and to give them a long life after the, the loved one passed away. Brothers and sisters, I speak, I'm a straight shorter and I speak directly to people. Muslims are getting sick and tired of the Islamophobia. They're getting tired of bigotry and stereotypes. And they're asking you fellow Canadians to help them out because they can't help, they can't help by themselves. Without your help, without the support of our fellow Canadians, we can't do it on our own. And I'm gonna give you some facts. Some facts that are undisputable. When you look around you in Vancouver, in Alberta, in Saskatchewan, in Manitoba, in Ontario, you will see the Muslim community at the least in crimes. They're the least in drug problems. The least, the least in homicides. The least in problems in the schools. The least in any kind of crimes that you can think of. But still, unfortunately, the media insist to marry Islam to terrorism. Unfortunately, it got to the level that 24 hours 7, for, for the last three decades, the media is pumping anti-Islamic materials on televisions. So when people, and I'm saying the media because they're the major, the major cause behind it, for sure. Of course, some, some responsible officials get caught into it and they make stupid statements like Donald Trump or who else comes on television and say Islam hates us and I'm going to deport all Muslims and going to ban all Muslims, which speaks of a manipulated mind that is full of ignorance. We say to Donald Trump, and we say to the CNN and Fox News and what other media out there, hold off for a second here. Just relax for a second here. 
Muslims have been have been living in in the West for so many years. They they had a civilization for over almost 1500 years. They had people from different religion living in their communities. Muslims had Christians, Jews, Hindus, atheists, everybody living in the Muslim communities. Have you ever seen have you ever seen Muslims attacking minorities in their countries? Have you ever seen churches or synagogues being destroyed? As a matter of fact, the history tells us that Islam teaches the absolute tolerance, to, to, tolerance and respect to other religions and other communities. The oldest churches in, in the world exist in the Middle East. The oldest synagogues exist in the Middle East. The oldest Christian communities exist in the Middle East. So we expect that when we come and live as a minority in other countries, we've treated the same, treated like brothers and sisters. We don't expect it to be worried about our, our young girls are going to school to have their head covers ripped off their head or be called names or our sons to be bullied in the school because their last name is Ahmed or Muhammad or Ramadan. We don't expect our wives to be attacked or we don't expect people to shoot us in the mosque while we're praying. So I'd say, end Islamophobia now. Please. One more point before I call on the first speaker. When you go out there, of course, everybody has a computer, everybody has access to internet, Facebook, social media, and so on. And you listen to statements made by radio, televisions, reporters, radio stations. Uh, you, made, you, you, you listen to statements made by some, some responsible people in power that scare you sometimes. And what we say to this, what we say to this, is that please if you are not going to allow Muslims to speak if you're not going to give them press to write articles to give a, a statement if you're not going to invite them to your television station to speak you're not going to invite imams or scholars to explain about the people of Islamic faith and their culture don't speak on their behalf please don't speak on behalf of Muslims if you want to learn about, about Muslims or about Islam, phone the Islamic Center. Come and visit a mosque. Come and see how we pray, what we say, what we discuss in our mosques, what we talk about. We discuss charity. We discuss worry about homeless people. We discuss about cooking food for people and getting blankets for them in the cold. I'm not saying this to show off, but we discuss our worry and our fear for our community, for our fellow Canadians. We worry about international issues that affect us as a whole humanity and we try to do something about it. We don't discuss terrorism, we don't talk about ISIS, we don't talk about, about the problems happening out there and concern ourselves with it here in, in Canada. We don't talk about these things. We talk about things that concern us as human beings. So when I hear people saying um, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Bin Laden, Saddam Hussein, I say, well, look, look, man, how many Muslims are there in the world today? There are two billion mis Muslims, almost two billion Muslims in the world today. If we say, if you expect a community to be perfect, you're dreaming. There's no perfect community in the world. It doesn't exist. There's always going to be black sheep in every community. But the point we're trying to make as Muslims here, not to defend the wrong doors in, in our community. There are always bad, bad people in every community. There's always people that take their the religions and, 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 and add on to the political agenda to attract more young people to it. But I say to them, how many terrorists do you think there is in the Muslim world? There are two billion people. If you say there is, there is a 10% of them that are radicals and terrorists. Do you know how many terrorists you'd have? You're gonna, you're gonna have 20 million terrorists. Can you imagine that? So they're not 10%. They're not even 1%. Because if you have 1% of the community that are bad, you know what you're gonna have? You're gonna have 200,000 200, radicals or terrorists around the world. You know how much serious the damage that can be? They're not even 1%. So you wanna know why we're sick and tired of it? Because they focus on the small, infringement community and minorities that lived out there and they focus on it every day televising it like I said Al-Qaeda, Zarqawi, Saddam Hussein all this and when you see this on television every day 24 hour 7 when you turn your your uh, your television sets or your news and this is all what you hear all day 
What are you going to expect that the average common man is going to, is going to be thinking about Muslim community? He's not going to see the beautiful Muslims of Indonesia, the most welcoming people. He's not going to see the nice Muslims in, in Malaysia, or, the, or the, 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 the educated Muslims in Turkey, or the nice Muslims, the, 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 the soft-hearted soft Muslims in India. He's going to see the example that is played in front of him 24 hours 7. And why is it dangerous? Because the opinion that created in the mind of the individual shapes an attitude towards the community. So one final message, please send a message to the media, tell them stop profiling Muslims and please stop demonizing Islam. Thank you very much. The first one who's always been supportive, always comes when we ask him to come and help, our member of parliament, Mr. Don Davis. Please come to the mic. Sisters and brothers, on behalf of the people of Vancouver Kingsway, on behalf of the New Democratic Party of Canada, and on behalf of all of my colleagues in the Federal New Democrat Caucus, it's an honor to come tonight, to come together, to stand with you, to share with you, and to serve notice. First, I want to share our solidarity first and foremost with our brothers and sisters in the Muslim community not only in Vancouver but across our country and to share our solidarity not only with people of the Muslim faith but with all Canadians who value the principles of equality of respect of inclusion of peace I come tonight to share with you our grief at the senseless loss of life that happened just a few days ago in Quebec City where six people were gunned down in of all places a place of worship a place where everyone no matter what your faith Sikh, Hindu, Muslim, Jew, Christian should be safe a place of peace, a place of fraternity, and to share our grief and our horror, not only with those families of those victims, but with everybody who knows that Canada is not a place where we will tolerate such a senseless act of barbarism. I come tonight to stand with you against those who express values of hatred, of intolerance, of disrespect. And we come tonight to serve notice. Sisters and brothers, words matter. Because words turn into thoughts, thoughts turn into deeds, and deeds turn into actions. And I'm here to serve notice to all Canadians, particularly leaders and politicians, particularly of the right, that we will hold them responsible yeah. for their words. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It is no longer acceptable for us to sit silently by when politicians of the right practice dog whistle politics, sometimes implicit, sometimes more obvious, where they express words of intolerance, words of division, words of incitement, words of hatred. And no longer will we let them say those words and duck responsibility for the actions that are the consequence of those words. No longer can those politicians practice that kind of politics and then deny responsibility for the inevitable actions of those that act in their name. So sisters and brothers, 
Tonight we stand for a Canada that the vast majority of Canadians believe in. That is a Canada that is inclusive, a Canada of peace, a Canada of welcoming, a Canada of love, a Canada where we welcome people of all faiths, of all beliefs, to come to this society and to live and work together side by side in harmony. And so sisters and brothers, and particularly I say this to my sisters and brothers in the Muslim community, you are not alone. Look around you. Canadians of every faith, Canadians of every color, Canadians of every persuasion are standing with you tonight to tell you you are not alone. And we will stand with you to fight for the Canada that we believe in that is the birthright of every Canadian. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming tonight. Go Canada, go! And don't forget to vote this election this May. Thank you. You're definitely a man for the community. You got my voice, by the way. <laughs> okay, so now I call on, uh, we have also a guest from the um, the uh, Independent Jewish Voice of BC, uh, Martha. Um, she uh, she heard about the event, and we've had uh, their support also before in different rallies. Uh, it was Mr. Sage Knight, who was actually out in California right now, and he said that he, he wished to be here, and he's sending uh, one of his colleagues instead. So we'll give we'll give the mic to Martha for a few minutes. What's your last name, my dear? I didn't get your last name. Ross, Martha Ross, thank you very much. Hello. I won't talk long because I'm terribly cold, as some of you must be. Sorry, I said I wasn't going to talk long because I'm very, very cold. And I think some of you must also be very cold. What warms us is fellowship, of course. We are so glad to be together in solidarity with the Muslim community at this terrible, terrible time. You can't hear? Close, close, close to your mouth. Yeah. It's practically down my throat. How's that? Is that better? Yes. Okay. Independent Jewish Voices stands in solidarity with the Muslim community. We are a group of dedicated anti-racists. Many of us have spent decades fighting for human rights around the world, uh, Jew among Jews and others. And we are very proud to be Canadians, to live in a place that is a safe haven for people of all <coughs> colors, all confessions, or none, all nationalities. Um, we, we feel especially close to you at this time because Jews also have been targeted for... Um, we have been victimized, we have been targeted, we have been scapegoated. The way the Muslim community is, is, is being targeted and scapegoated now. So you have our special warm wishes and support Bless you all. Thanks. Should be together in difficult time. I wanted to add something to what Martha said. That we Muslims, at the difficult time, also when we were, when we had uh, all the Jews living in our countries, in Morocco, in Tunisia, and in Spain, through the difficult time where they had they had to run from homes our doors were open to them. And we have the oldest Jewish community that we're proud to have in the country of Morocco, in the Middle East. And one of the oldest Jewish synagogues is in Morocco. And the Jewish historians mention this proudly. Also, 
Uh, I'm going to tell you about a, a small incident that happened in France during World War II when, um, when Hitler actually anarchist France and went in Paris and was hunting down some of the Jewish community. He was looking for the, the important, the vital members of the Jewish community. There's a little bit of story about the Grand Mosque in Paris, which not many people know about, but if you search it in Google, you'll find it. The Imam of the mosque at that time had opened the door for the underpassage of the mosque, there was a hidden area, and had all the Jews who run from Hitler come down and hide under the mosque. And there was a singer, the interesting story is about a singer called Salman Halali, and uh, Salim Halali. Salim Halali was a Jew from Algeria. He, was, he used to sing and he, was, he used to perform in, in, in Paris, and then he was famous. And then being, a, being a, a performer and a singer, he had a beautiful voice, he thought he was immune to, to the Nazis' problems that, he had, that they had in Paris. But then he was told that they would be, they'll be hunting him down. So they told him, go to the mosque, the Grand Mosque, speak to the Imam. He's like, oh, he's going to do something about it? He said, yes. So he said, I can't hide you here, you're too famous. <laughs> and you're not going to perform under the mosque. But what I can do for you, and this story is still, is still today, and, it's, uh, and you can see the French, um, the French um, reporters and the, uh, the filmmakers have a video about it on YouTube. It says, you're too famous and too important to be hiding here. They will find you. But what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to give you a fake birth certificate that you're a Muslim and from your Muslim parents. And they said, oh. All right, so he did that, and then he said, I'm going to go further, I'm going to put a grave in a Muslim cemetery with your father's name on it among the Muslims. So that's what saved Salim Halali from, from, being, being, target, from being targeted in France. Just a little story for you. Okay, now, now I call on uh, our uh, dear city council, Mr. Jet Max. He's here to speak for a few minutes. of course, that we're on the unceded territories of the Tsleil-Waututh, the Musqueam, and the Squamish First Nations, whose values of inclusion are making it possible for all of us to be here. And it's, it's those values and taking note of the history that we've had in this city, not always a good one of inclusion, and I really want to thank all of you for being here to demonstrate that the respect that you're showing to the uh, values of harmony and unity in our city are directly opposite to the values that we as a community uh, are seeing in the Islamophobic and hateful acts and statements that are being made elsewhere in the country and maybe even in our own midst as we've heard tonight. So I'll say that uh, certainly on behalf of the Mayor and Councillor Andy Reimers here tonight as well, I believe. There may be others if I've missed you, I'm sorry. We want to thank you for what you're doing tonight. I've heard from uh, my friend Harun Khan, who's involved in the mosque in Fairview, which was the original mosque in BC, that over a thousand people gathered there to then proceed down to the uh, Jackpool Plaza, that uh, your actions, along with those of so many others across Canada, are a powerful statement against hatred, racism, and Islamophobia. So I want to thank you all for coming and, and express our council's support and solidarity with the people of the Muslim community. We're very happy to have the city council come tonight and say a few words as everybody loves you <laughs> as you can see uh, I'm now going to uh, call on our uh, Muslim brothers from the community I just wanted the guest to speak first I believe we had um, we had an attempt uh, to bring uh, one of our dear um, Mr. Peter Julian but I think he was um, he had some uh, issues that prevented him from coming this evening but what I'd like to do is give the floor to uh, the Muslim Association of Canada manager, Mr. Ahmed Khalil, to come and say a few words. He's uh, been one of the main organizers for this event and he worked uh, really hard behind the scene. He doesn't speak much, he's a little shy, so help him out. <laughs> Thank you very much, Todd. So I parked my car. That's done. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. This gathering is actually a testament for humanity. And the fact that the Canadian mosaic can actually gather us today, I think this is something that's very unique. And you see it in pictures across the nation. 
Every vigil that's been held over the past few days has had people from all cultures, all faiths, all backgrounds, all ethnicities. It was as if this act of terror, this horrendous, horrific attack, had a positive effect of uniting us together, of gathering us together tonight and on several nights and hopefully for the future to come. To remember that we are, first and foremost, despite our differences, are human beings. And that we share a brotherhood that transcends the brotherhood of ethnicity, that transcends the brotherhood of blood, and that is the brotherhood of humanity. Brother Ezzedine Sufyan, one of the victims of the attack, I knew him. I never met him face to face, but we had a few phone conversations many years ago. And one of the things that I have, I remember, the impression that I had was how exuberant he was, how, how much his smile would pass through the phone lines, how I'd feel his politeness, his kindness, his warm heart. And one of the things that he had recently done was that he had taken his family to perform what is known as the Umrah, which is a visit to the Kaaba. It's the same visit that Malcolm X did many years ago, that changed his life. Malcolm X says, when he came back from that visit, was that he saw people who had the blondest of the blondest of hairs, who had the bluest of the bluest of eyes, and yet he felt in their hearts a brotherhood and a connection that he never felt for many years. And that changed his perspective on humanity altogether. That same visit, Ezzedine Sufyan had taken his family towards just before passing away, just before dying on that night. He had just returned. He had just returned. And so a reminder that I gave my congregants was that we need to put effort to instill in our children that same feeling the feeling of the brotherhood of humanity that transcends all kinds of brotherhood. The feeling that we need to be connected and rise up above the hate, above the transgression, above the Islamophobia, above the racism, wherever it may exist, in whatever community it may happen towards. We need to rise up and stand in solidarity together as we have done tonight. My last word before I pass the mic back to Tariq is that thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here tonight despite the weather. Thank you from on behalf of the Muslim community for joining us tonight and on several other nights for showing your solidarity with us, for proving to us that Canada is truly our home. Thank you very much. We have uh, our Imam here, our scholar in the midst of us, and his name is Imam Mufti Asim, and he is, uh, mashallah, is very knowledgeable. He works with the Ihsan organization, so if any, any one of you, any one of our fellow Canadian wants to ask a question, I have his contact information. There's also a, a, a telephone number for the Imam that you can call. I believe also you can reach it through the, uh, the website. I will have I will have the Imam speak for a few minutes. Mufti Asim, please come to the mic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I just have three very brief messages to share with all of you. The first is that our gathering establishes the fact that we as Canadians do not put up with oppression and we do and will always stand with the oppressed irrespective of their race, culture, religion or tradition. The second thing 
is that we don't put up with oppressors and we don't side with the oppressors irrespective of their race, tradition, and religion. Terrorism is terrorism is terrorism no matter who the perpetrators are. Our pledge as Muslims, and I'm saying this on behalf of all the Muslims in Canada, it doesn't matter what name or whose name those acts are done in. We unequivocally will stand against those who carry out any act of violent extremism, terrorism, anyone who extends a hand to take lives or hurt people or damage property, we will do what it takes to stop them, especially if they're from our background. Our request to you, and I know I don't need to make this request because you've already fulfilled it, is you will do the same. My third very humble request is that there's an adage that says man is an enemy of that which he knows not. And that's exactly what happened on Sunday. A man became an enemy of that which he knew not and carried out an act of extreme violence and aggression against that thing which he knew not. Islam, we know, we feel how controversial even the word Islam and Muslim has become today. There are many of us, girls wearing hijab going to school, or boys wearing a cap or a beard, people going to the mosque. There are so many insecurities in the hearts of these people, they can't even express them. Some of these people are going to school in fear of being judged, or worse, being insulted, or worse, being abused. People are going to apply for jobs with the fear that they may not get them just because of their background, because someone's going to label them as an extremist. There are a lot of fears and insecurities. But I invite all of you, if you have misunderstandings or confusions about Islam or Muslims, then come and talk to us. We are the source of information. We are here. We've always been here. People like me have grown up here. This is our only home. And we're not going anywhere. If you have confusions, if you're feeling frustrated about something you're seeing on the news, something you're hearing, come and talk to a Muslim. It's that easy. And it's not so frightening. We're not that frightening. To any subject, to any civilization, to any culture, to any religion, that you study it in the light of events as they are portrayed in the media. It's not fair. Our kids don't learn math by listening to the news. We send them to places called schools, to people called teachers, with resources like things we call books. And that's how you learn about a subject. So let's be fair. You want to learn about Islam? You have questions? Talk to a Muslim. You'll find them everywhere, they're all around, they're in every sector of society, and they come in all shapes and colors. So, here we are, and you are welcome, we are your neighbors, you are our neighbors, you're not going anywhere, we're not going anywhere. There is an initiative Brother Tariq mentioned about learning, asking questions. There is a, a project called Islam Unraveled. It is specifically for people who have questions about Islam, they're not looking to be preached at. They just have questions. So islamunraveled.ca is the website. Islam Unraveled is on, on Facebook. You can connect with us over there. Ask your questions. If you want us to hold a program for your group, your organization, your church, your whatever it is, you contact us and we'll set something up. Thank you very much and have a great evening. You're a, you're definitely a learned man and we're always happy to have you. Before I call on the next speaker, I, I like to clarify some misconceptions, you know, once in a while, just to make this meaningful a little bit. I, I've been in I've been in Canada for almost almost 29 years, 
and being closely with the Muslim organizations, we, we deal with a lot of uh, a lot of challenges sometimes and a lot of questions. And one of the one of the most um, I would say challenging question that I, that we got, people come and say to us or leave messages on the phone or whatever. Um, you people hate the West. You know, Muslims hate the West. You, you know, you guys want to dominate the world. You know, you, you want to bring Sharia law. Isn't this the thing that you always hear on televisions and, and all this kind of scarcity and hype? And so I said, I said, okay. <laughs> Where did you get all that from? Oh, I heard it from Robert Spencer, or from from Daniel Pipe, or from whatever. I said, okay, fine. That's fine. But how about hearing it from us for the first time? Hey, what do you have to say? I said, look, do you, do you know that as a Muslim, and, and we are very serious about our creed and our belief, we take it very seriously, we don't mess around. We do, in Islam, you, you learn something, you don't argue with God. He knows best. Whatever he tells you, you don't argue with it. So if he tells us something, we, we don't do something to try different different ways. If we're told that in the Quran, and I'm not trying to give you a lecture here, but, I, but I'm trying to educate you a little bit about our community. There is no compulsion in religion. It's in very clear, unmistakable term. It says to the Prophet Muhammad, it says, and if your Lord wills it, he will make all humanity believe. He will make all humanity Muslims. Will you then force them to believe? Meaning there's no, it doesn't matter how hard you how hard you work, how how much you you grieve over people not following you or not don't believe in what you believe. It, this is just humanity. He created in this way. There's always going to be different different people. So learn to live with it. And also, it says that a Muslim who migrates to a different country. Like if you come as a Muslim to a, to be a minority in America, in Canada, in Europe, you cannot force your way of life on the community. That's a challenge. There's no such a thing in a religion of Islam where it says you have to bring Sharia Allah. Because they, they, what is, this is the biggest scarcity they, they bring out their whole, beware of Muslims, they get a Sharia zone. C come down, man. First of all, first of all, if you cannot force people to follow your way of life in your own country or in, wherever you live, how can you force it when you are a minority in another country? It says that as a part of the, 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 the book of covenants, as we call it, in the, in the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, teaching of the Quran, you sign an immigration documents to come to Canada or United States or Europe, you respect the covenant, and this is considered a treaty and a covenant that you follow and abide by. You abide by the law of the land, you don't force your religion, you don't force your sharia, you don't force nothing on this country. Clear, unmistakable term. So, people who say sharia law, scare people with the sharia and all this kind of stuff, it's red herons, it's a false flag. We don't, we don't force our way and our religions on anybody. We practice our, our faith freely and respect other people for what they practice. And we've been taught, and I say this one more time, we've been taught, to respect people and respect their choices, even if they know that Islam is the absolute truth, and even if they know Prophet Muhammad is a very true prophet, and they say, well, I don't want to follow it, no problem. We, do, we don't judge nobody. We're not the judge of mankind. It's only the Almighty. He's in control of that. So I want to just want to clarify that. So you have a Muslim neighbor live next door to you. You shouldn't be worried. They're, not, nothing to worry about. He's not, he's not going to bring the Quran and knock on your door and say, if you don't believe in this, you're going to burn in hell. We don't do that. You know? Muslim children grow next to your children. They're going to influence them in a positive manner because we teach our children to have respect, to not, not to, not to uh, deal with people harshly, to, to be friendly with people, not to do drugs, not to carry guns and weapons, not to do anything like that, to respect their teachers. So when you have a Muslim neighbor, you're lucky. Honestly, you're a lucky man. Okay? Don't listen to Donald Trump. <laughs> I call <laughs> I call I call on our next speaker, Council for Islamic Relation. He works really hard as a an advocate as an advocate lawyers that stands for Muslim rights in Canada and US. So I call on Brother Kashif Ahmed. He will address you for a few minutes. Thank you very much. 
Asalaamu Alaikum, peace be upon you. I'm going to keep this short because we all have to head to the Jack Pool, right? And join a much larger rally and, and show solidarity uh, with all our fellow Canadians. Thank you for coming tonight. My name is Kashif Ahmed. I'm the board chair of the National Council of Canadian Muslims, which is a national civil liberties and advocacy organization. And I, and I see so many familiar faces here tonight. Thank you, Don Davies, for being here tonight. Much appreciated. And to all of you for being here today. We are here today, of all backgrounds, united against fear, against hate, and we stand in solidarity with all people and with all communities. The type of horrific attack that we saw last Sunday does not represent who we are as a country, and we condemn it all together. Voices of compassion and love will always, always drown out the voices that seek to divide us and that seek to harm us. Canadian Muslims are deeply impacted and frightened by what happened last Sunday. I was at a wedding in Calgary when my phone started vibrating and it wouldn't stop vibrating. And I couldn't look at my phone but I was very surprised that my phone was not stopping to vibrate. And it was a message from our executive director in Ottawa, Isan Gardi, that a terrible event that we saw last Sunday had occurred. The shock is still with me today. And it might be for a while longer. But I can speak for many Canadian Muslims in saying that we are heartened by the support that all of us, all of you rather, are showing tonight across the country. This is the moment for all of us to reaffirm our collective commitment to nurturing inclusive communities where everyone is welcome. Fellow Canadians have been overwhelming in their love and their support, as all of you are showing tonight, we pray for the victims and their families, we pray for Canada, and we pray for our world. And tonight I urge all municipalities, officials, institutions in BC and beyond to go to nccm.ca and endorse NCCM's charter for inclusive communities. Just last night, Toronto City Hall endorsed this charter and I hope to see the Charter endorsed by Vancouver City Council next week. Yes. We're going to get through this together because so much good can come out from this tragedy. Let us take a moment to remember and pray for Ezzedine Sufyan, Mamadou Tanu Berry, Abdul Karim Hassan, Ibrahim Berry, Khalid Balchani, and Abu Bakr Tabti, the six men who lost their lives senselessly in an act of hate and violence. Please think of their families. There are 17 orphans made from that terrible, terrible tragedy. We pray for their families. We ask for healing and solace. Thank you. God bless you, and God bless Canada. There are people that know how to speak, eh? They're, they're good. They're educated too. That's awesome. Okay. Now, regard, regard the, um, regarding the people that lost their lives in Quebec, one of them was a, a pharmacist, and one was a doctor, a university professor, and one was a, uh, an owner of um, a grocery store, and one was a student, and the other one, I think, was a teacher. And um, the, the, the university professor actually spoke spoke in different events, I remember. He, he was a, was a well-known a well man. And I remember him, he used to say, SubhanAllah, I, I just, this has caught me by surprise. He used to always say that the only way that we can live together is through tolerance and love. The only way through tolerance and love. So may Allah have mercy on his soul. Now, 
We we have a couple more speakers and then we're gonna march after this. So now I uh, like to call on uh, Brother Musa Ismail from the British Columbia Muslim Association. He was the previous president of the association. So he would like. No, I'm just joking. You're all, you're always welcome in the community. Thank you so so very much. Thank you all of you who have come here. I'm just going to take two minutes. Just bear with me. Number one, the speaker before me, the Mufti, the Imam who came, and he alluded to one thing, and one thing very dearly, and which I have been talking about this for the last five days. I've been to a couple of churches, I've been to interfaith group, I've been to a few mosques, I've been to Holland Park, and the only thing I want to leave behind with you, out of all of this tragedy, tra tragedy let's resolve to do one thing and that is let us get ourselves educated let us get all the school board and the mayors and MLAs and school school board people and counselors please listen to this we need to educate our children under the banner of religious studies and I say that with open heart to say what I'm trying to say, if every child and all of us only understood each other's religion with open heart and open mind, we will be more tolerant, we will respect each other, yes. and inshallah, God willing, we won't have these kind of problems anymore. Just to conclude, I will also confess to you that my Muslim brothers who are radicalized are being led by people with lack of knowledge or little knowledge. The brother who did the thing that he did, the, I can't even speak. The brother in Quebec, he took arms against humanity. Is it his fault? Is it really his fault? That's the question. Or is it lack of knowledge and somebody else brainwashed him to do what he did. I believe it's the latter. It is the lack of knowledge. So I am saying, that's why I'm saying, let's tell our MLAs, MPs and counselors to think about introducing a curriculum in every school. Every child should know each other's religion, respect each other, and live in peace forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. That would be an achievement if it happens, actually, and I think it's necessarily for sure. So, we have a, um, a gentleman here called Harun Khan. He is uh, the president of the Pakistan Canada Association, and he's the one that made the biggest gathering around Vancouver at the Open Mosque, and he'll be here speaking with us for a few minutes as well. Brother Harun Khan, go ahead. With Tariq Bai, Salam Alaikum. Ladies and gentlemen, Tariq Ramadan. Tireless, tireless worker. This is a man who leads by example. Dark Bai, thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Peace be unto you, brothers and sisters of Vancouver. Here we are tonight. Look at the lights that you have in your hands and look at the lights on all your faces. You are lighting up this city. You are lighting up this province. You're lighting up this country and you're lighting up the world with love and with understanding. And that's what we've got to do because love and understanding will conquer hate, fear, and ignorance. Now my dear respected brothers and sisters, I know that you've been standing here for a long time and I just have come from the Vancouver Al Jamia Masjid. It's the first masjid in Vancouver. It was established well over 50 years ago in 1963. And I invite each and every one of you to come. Come on in. We had a, a crowd just like this outside the mosque, and they all came in. And this is the thing, let's open the doors of, of our houses of worship, let's open our churches, our synagogues, our temples, our munders, all of these places, let's open them up and let's understand each other. Because it is through understanding, it is through the light that is achieved through understanding that we will achieve peace. And we will follow the golden rule. The golden rule is let's treat each other as we'd like to be treated. And I'd like to be treated pretty damn well. So everyone, there's a massive pro pro gathering right now amassing at Jack Pool Plaza. And before I hand it off to Tar Brother Tarek, I just want to thank each and every one of you. 
for being here tonight and for standing in solidarity, not just for Muslims, but for all of humanity. Because if you take one soul, it's as if you've slain all of humanity. And if you've saved a life, it's as if you've saved all of humanity. I believe we're doing that here tonight. So thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Arun. You're, you're a fiery speaker. Reminds me of Balkan X. <laughs> now, call on uh, Brother Ru. Make sure we leave with, with a couple of messages that have been reiterated over and over and over in this gathering. First of all, Canadian Muslims have felt the support of every single Canadian across the board from Quebec City all the way to Vancouver. And I would say go Canucks, go Canucks, and thanks, we're all Canucks at the end of the day, we're all Canadians. We have our lives here, every single person. I really like to mention to you that Canadians are in every walk of life here, Muslim Canadians, in every single walk of life. We are teachers, engineers, my friend Kashif Ahmed is a lawyer who volunteered all his time, who just spoke before, before a bit, to actually sit on board of an organization, volunteering his, his time while working as a lawyer to essentially combat Islamophobia. Those are the Muslims who felt the need for these things, the need for what's harming every one of us. The second message I want to leave with all of you is that terrorism doesn't know a race, a color, a religion. It hits us as Canadian Muslims, as it hits you, as it hits our brothers in Syria by the state, as it hits our brothers in Iraq. Everywhere across the world, terrorism doesn't know a color, doesn't know a race, doesn't know a religion. And we are all hit, and what happened on Sunday is, a great, is an example of that. So I don't want to keep you late. We're going to head now, Tarek, to the plaza. So I'm going to ask my brother Tarek to come. Thank you very much. We have one last speaker that's going to speak to you for a few minutes. And this is Brother Shahzad Mansouri. He came with an idea that I thought is very brilliant. Brilliant idea. And he took the initiative to print the flyers, which he will call on people to turn this event into something positive and is encouraging our community and, every, and everyone in our community, our fellow Canadians, to donate blood, to go to the blood center and donate blood in the commemoration of the six brothers that lost their lives. So to turn it into a positive, here's Shahzad Masori. He will tell you a little bit about the idea. Come to the mic, please. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. There you go. Uh, everything that had to be said has been said. I'm not going to keep repeating what uh, what we've all already heard. All I'm asking for, we're going to be encouraging our Muslim brothers and sisters for sure at our community level. Somebody took away six lives. Somebody took away six lives and wanted to make a point of hatred. We're going to turn the tragedy on its head and we're going to give life. And that's the whole idea behind this thing. You are not going to stop us. You're not going to make us hate each other. And your ending life does not mean ending life. We are going to take the tragedy. We're going to turn this tragedy. Please, I'm asking and urging each and every one, every Canadian, regardless of faith, just give one pint of blood in the memory of those guys who lost their lives. Just imagine how many lives we can save. And before I go, I'm just going to ask one thing from all of you. We hear this word called Islamic terrorism. Islamic, Islamic terrorism, Islamic terrorists, Islamic terrorists. Tell them, stop using the oxymoron. Islam means peace. Terrorist is the exact opposite. There is no such thing as a peaceful terrorist. There's absolutely no such thing as a peaceful terrorist. Terrorist is a terrorist is a terrorist. It has no religion and no background. It, has, it does not believe in anything except to follow its own wishes. So please, next time when you hear the word term Islamic terrorist, denounce it. Thank you very much.